Before Chamberlain's question, you were actually going on a course and you were talking about uh, the PATIS programs. Yes. And one wonders, when we talk about PATIS program, we haven't seen a, you know, a deviation from the Assembly uh, or from the Senate President uh, from the PATIS program. So one wonders if how he imagines, you know, he's, uh, is a problem to the party, knowing full well that if they say they are on the course and this is the manifesto of the political party which sponsored him, that's the, the APC, now the ruling party, has he gone, you know, out of the programs of the party for you to have warrant, uh, you said something about, uh, what do you call it again, morality. Yeah. Because the course here now is about the independence, which we must also not uh, ignore here. Yes. The senators are saying they are truly independent, and their independence is being demonstrated by electing their own leaders. And if we want to see this kind of independence or interference or overreaching influence of the political parties, how does this affect our polity? Yeah, I was talking about the issue of the program to underscore the fact that the issue of independence will not erode the influence of the party in the composition of the leadership of the National Assembly or the composition of members of the executive team. It doesn't take it away. The party will always be there. Underneath all of this is the party program. Underneath all of this is in the view of the party, how should this government be constituted? How should powers and offices be distributed? It's all part of politics. I'm not a member of the APC. I mean, I'm not defending the APC, but I'm simply looking at it both from the legal and the moral perspective. And you say we cannot uh, divorce the moral you, you, aspect? You, no, you, can, you, 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 you cannot. Because at the end of the day, we say, look, all this is about persecution, about persecution. There is some ulterior motive behind it. Or you say it is witch hunting. I said, okay, it may be. But first and foremost, you must be a witch to be hunted. What if he was not a witch and he's been hunted? Exactly. That is possible. Okay, now, but if you are not a witch, for you to be hunted, then we must have found certain things about you that are akin to the conduct of a witch. In other words, there's no smoke without fire. And for you to say that, look, I'm being singled out for persecution. I would not be in the dock if I were not the Senate president. And I say, hey, a policeman stops me and says, look, you're driving without a driving license. And I don't have one. And I looked at the policeman and said, hey, look, there are so many cars behind me. Have you checked them to see whether they don't have driving license? Why is this that you are pulling me out? It's not defense. Are you suggesting that the points that they're making about witch hunt and the background the, to the whole thing doesn't hold water? It doesn't hold water. If on the facts as we have them, before the Code of Conduct Tribunal, certain facts have been laid out in the charges, which, if true, are alarming. Mm. Well, Prof, quite a number of people will say that what we're dealing with here, in essence, is perception. Uh, the president has talked about a war on corruption. Yes. Perhaps he even wrote to power on that manifesto yes. of, of fighting corruption. His party did so as well. Uh, and people, a lot of people will say that one of the first things is perception of how that war is being carried out. If people perceive that, you know, institutions of government will be used to witch hunt them, especially if, if this is coming from the Senate, how do you think that that, that would affect the war against corruption? Uh, I'll look at it from another perspective. How does it play out, morally or otherwise, that a government that rode on the plank of you know, no nonsense, zero tolerance for corruption on integrity, then has a number three candidate who the Code of Conduct Bureau has found to have something to account for with respect to declaration of assets, with respect to corrupt enrichment. Have they found or they just... No, 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 that's the charges. I said the Bureau. Oh, okay. The Bureau. I didn't say the Tribunal. Which is the basis upon which they have preferred these charges. How does it play out 
for the image of that government that the number three candidate. But we cannot wish away the history of how the Senate president emerged. Yeah. And if we cannot wish that history away, how do you think that this matter should have been handled? Because they also say that due process was not followed in terms of how he was brought before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Again, I will look at it from the tail end. If at the end of the day, the tribunal finds him wanting for contraventions, infractions of the code of conduct for public officers, what are the consequences? The constitution says in that case, the, the, the tribunal can order the vacation or will order the vacation of the seat he holds in that legislative house or the office that he holds. He may also be barred by way of a disqualification order from participating in any other public office. And then, of course, the sequestration of assets that are found proven to be corruptively acquired. If that blows at the end and the Senate president sits tight and says, until that is found, I will not vacate. How will it blow up for the integrity of the Senate and the government? Well, what if he's, not, if he's found not guilty? What then happens? If he's found not guilty, his honor will be restored. But at the same time, that honor will be double. Look, we've seen cases of simple cases of uh, alleged rapes and notable public officers internationally then stepped down and said, hey, until this air is cleared, my moral integrity is at stake. I would rather step aside from exalted offices. You know, people are When you do that, Prof. you exalt the office. And at the end of the day, if you are then found innocent, it is double exaltation for you. I understand you, Professor, uh, Prof. The, the thing here is that some would say, in other climbs, yes. in other climbs, that's what uh, is expected of the Yes, individual. why can't we live up to those standards? But After they, all, they have these are back. all I'm coming, I'm honorable coming members. I'm coming, Prof. They have come Where back. is the they honor? Have, uh, hold on, if prof, we say we must prof, throw prof, morality here, to the dustbin in the prof, name for legality. A minute here. We're coming back home. They just realized, some have argued that, look, if you want anyone to get out of the way, what you do is just throw any kind of allegation against that person. Once the person is out, you clear him or her, and it's business as usual. But the aim is achieved. Recall how the same standard will apply to whoever is coming. How the speaker it at only that time the degree of integrity. How the speaker at that time, Patricia Ete, yes. the right honourable Patricia Ete, yes. was moved out of office. Yes. And after that, it was found out that she was innocent after all. Yes. And Senator Wombichi just tried to remind us of what we have seen with past Senate presidents and some speakers, and now you say. That is what should be done in Nigeria. But Nigerians, uh, some of them are saying, wait a minute, we shouldn't even get to that part first. Let's clear this whole thing while the person stays in office. If the person is guilty at the end of the day, he leaves office. We can actually start a new system, can't we? A new system that says you must stay put until you are found guilty. That is why, for example, you remember the case of uh, Farouk Lawan. Okay, who it was all over the press, both the accusers, the givers of the bribe, the recipients of the bribe, you know, they all stated their versions on the pages of newspapers. But because of this whole idea that, oh, until he is found guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction, he is innocent, he succeeded in stretching the entire judicial system, and indeed, I think that matter is still in court, and he served his full term. Is that the kind of honor we want in the hallowed chambers of the National Assembly?